Welcome to IST's PoloWare tutorial. This tutorial will walk you through the setup and running of your first match. This is meant to be a general overview. For more information on any of the items on any screen, you can consult the help files here. Let's begin by setting up your preferences. Preferences allows you to set up PoloWare for your specific computer and hardware. On the main menu, click Preferences. This is the Preferences screen. If you have a scoreboard, select the manufacturer. If you do not use the scoreboard, click on None. Mine is an IST board. Now set the number of lines on the scoreboard. Mine has one scrolling line and six fixed lines. If it is a numeric only scoreboard that is not alphanumeric, click on the numeric checkbox here. If it is an alphanumeric board, leave this blank. If you have a period score type scoreboard, click the period score checkbox here. If you have a second scoreboard that you use, select the appropriate information for that board here. Next, set the port that you have the Polo interface or scoreboard connected to. If you are not using a scoreboard, click None. If you are not sure which port you are using, you can use the Windows Device Manager to find it. See the Windows help files for more information on finding and using the Device Manager. Next, use the drop down boxes to select the ports that the game clock, shot clock, and buttons are plugged into. If you are using a Polo interface box, a square black box with several inputs on the top and sides, select the port that the box is plugged into for all three items. Buttons must be plugged into a Polo interface box, so their COM port will be the port that the box is plugged into. The shot clock and game clock do not necessarily need to be plugged into the box, so they may not be on the same port as the buttons. For more information, you can check the setup instructions that came with your PoloWare software. There are two new options in Preferences in PoloWare 3. If you have the Ejection Stops Clock box checked, then any time there is an ejection, the game and shot clocks will automatically stop until the operator restarts them. If it is unchecked, the clock will continue to run until the operator stops it. If the Goal Stops Clock box is checked, then any time the Goal button is clicked, the game and shot clocks will automatically stop until the operator restarts them. If it is unchecked, the clock will continue to run after a goal until the operator stops it manually. These can be set based on your preference. That is the basics for a typical setup. Now let's go enter the teams. Every team that competes in a match will first need to be entered into the system. From the main menu, click Teams. All PoloWare systems come with a blue default and a white default team, already set up so that you can use these for practice. To add a new team, click the Add button. Enter the name of the team. Mine will be Ottawa Hills. The team name can be up to 30 characters long and should be unique for each team. Once you've entered the name, press Enter and type in the team code. This is an abbreviation of the team name that will be used on the scoreboard and on reports. The team code can be up to six characters long, but the first two characters must be unique for each team in PoloWare. This team will be OHHS. Press Enter to accept the team code. You can now go ahead and enter as much information as you want about the team. I usually put in the mascot, coaches, and the captains if I know them. One other important item to note is the home team checkbox here. If this is the home team for the pool, make sure that they are checked. This will help keep track of the team for reports. Once you've finished entering all the team information, click OK. You can now set up another team by clicking Add again. When you are finished entering all of the teams, click Exit, and now we can enter the rosters for the teams.
The roster in PoloWare allows you to keep track of your athletes. It can be as simple as the name, grade, and cap number of the athlete, or it can include all of the contact information to be used for reports or mailing labels. Before you enter the roster, you must have already entered the team information into the system. To enter the roster, click Athletes and Roster. This is the main roster administrator screen. On the top left is the list of teams in your system. If you haven't added a team for which you want to add the roster, you need to go back and do that now. Otherwise, select the team from the list. Each team entered automatically has a name, comma, no entry. To add a swimmer to the roster, click the Add button. Type in the last name, press Enter or Tab, and type in the first name. You do not have to enter a middle name or a nickname, but you do need to type in a cap number. Each athlete must have a unique cap number. If you need to assign the same cap number to several athletes, enter the cap numbers as 10, 10A, 10B, etc. If one athlete has several cap numbers, assign one of the numbers in the roster, and then change the cap number as necessary on the Run Match screen, which we will go over later. Next, enter the athlete's grade. their gender, and their division. The division is important if you are running JV and varsity matches. If you do not have the division set, then in a match with the division selected, you will not see that athlete in the match roster. You can also enter a birth date and age if you need to. The rest of the information can be entered at any time and can be used for roster lists and mailing labels. If you want to be able to enter only the information that is required for each athlete, click the short form checkbox here. This will enable only the necessary fields and allow you to tab through quickly. Once you have finished entering the information, click OK. You can now enter the next athlete. If you need to edit an athlete, select them from the list by clicking on their name. You can then change any information. You can also delete an athlete, as long as they have not been entered in a match. Once you have entered all of the athletes for each team, you can go ahead and set up your match. Each match that is played must be set up as its own match. Before setting up a match, you must have the team set up that will be playing in the match. If you have not done so, please go back and do that now. To set up a match, click on the Match menu and select New. Type in the name of your match. It should be unique and descriptive and less than 30 characters. Then click OK. This brings you to the match setup screen. Here you enter information for the match. Place allows you to put in the name of the site where the match will be played. The date is the date that the match will take place. From the drop down lists, select the blue team and the white team. Next, you need to set up the parameters for the match, including the length and number of periods the length of time between periods, and the number of seconds at which to warn about the end of the break. You can also set up the number of timeouts and how long each timeout is, and at what time to warn that the end of the timeout is coming. If you are using a shot clock, make sure that the Enable box is checked and that the clock is set for the correct number of seconds. Set the exclusion clock and the length and warning time for the halftime. If you are running your match in a deep water pool, make sure that the deep water box is checked. This tells the system to use the deep water rules for overtime play. You also need to select the division and the gender for the match. 
Make sure that you have these set correctly, as you will only be able to see the athletes of that division and gender in the roster when you are running the match. If you click the Save as Default button, it will save these settings so that the next time you create a new match, these settings will appear as the defaults. Now that you have a match set up, you can go ahead and run it. Before you run a match, you need to check your hardware, even if it was working the last time. Before running diagnostics, it is always a good idea to go to preferences and check to make sure that the settings are all correct. Make sure that you have everything hooked up correctly and all cables are plugged in tightly. Then go to match and hardware diagnostic. On this screen, you can see representations of all of the items that you can test. The scoreboard, game clock, shot clock, and the buttons. When the screen opened, a test pattern was put on both the physical scoreboard and on the one on the screen, as well as on the game clock and shot clock. Check the scoreboard pattern carefully to make sure that the pattern on the board matches the one on the screen. If it does, click continue, and the board and clocks will begin cycling through their character sets. Use this to make sure that the computer is talking to the clocks and that all of the LED clusters are working. What you see on the screen should be what you're seeing on the clocks and the scoreboard. To test the horn on the clock, click the horn button, which will cause the horn to sound. If you are using game and shot clock buttons, depress the plunger on the button. The picture of the button on the screen will also show the button being depressed. If something is not working, first check your COM port numbers using Windows Device Manager. Then check the hardware settings under Preferences. Check all cables and connections to make sure that they are plugged into the correct places and that the connection is tight. You can also check for corrosion or discoloration, usually green, on the connections, which may cause problems. If you are sure that everything is connected properly and in good working order, please contact IST for more troubleshooting help. When you are finished with the diagnostics and everything is working properly, you can go ahead and run the match. Once you have the teams in the system, athletes in the roster, your match set up, and the hardware working properly, you are ready to run your match. Click on Match and Run. Select the match from the drop down list and then click OK. This is the run screen. Before we begin the match, let's do a quick tour. The screen is divided into the blue team, or the home team, and the white team, the visiting team. At the top are the shot clock controls and the game clock controls, which will run as the game is played. The period is here and the overtime checkbox, which will be checked if the match is in overtime. On each team's area are the function buttons for that team. This shows the score for the team, and by clicking on the G, it assigns one point to the team. This is the number of timeouts remaining for the team, and clicking the TO button will assign a timeout to that team. Clicking on the P button assigns a penalty to the team. Clicking E assigns an ejection, and clicking the yellow or red boxes will assign a yellow or red card to the team. The team's fouls spinner shows the number of fouls that have been assigned to the team in the form of penalties or ejections. Clicking the GS button will record a goalie save in the match log. This is the same on the white team's side. You have the choice of using the buttons here in each of the areas to assign actions, or if you check the enable spinners box, you can also use the spinners to increase or decrease the numbers in the boxes instead. The buttons are tied to the clocks, so when you click on one, the clocks will stop and the shot clock will reset as necessary. Next to each team box is the sprint button. Click on this button to designate who won the sprint at the beginning of play. You also have the horn button, which you can click on to sound the horn at any time. When the horn sounds, the letters will turn red to let you know that it should be sounding. This button starts and stops the game clocks, or you can use the push buttons connected to your Polo interface. These buttons allow you to reset, start, and stop the shot clock if you are using one. 
Again, you can use the push buttons attached to the Polo interface to control this. If stop time is checked, the game clock will stop any time a goal is scored or a penalty is assigned. If you uncheck the box, the game clock will continue to run unless stopped by the operator. If the sync clock adjustment box is checked, then all three clocks, game, shot, and exclusion, will be synced. The arrows here are possession arrows. Click on an arrow to change the possession for that team. The team that has possession will have a green arrow. Any actions that you assign, like points and penalties, are automatically logged to the match log. The edit log button here will take you to that log and allow you to make changes. The refresh button will refresh the scoreboard in case of a power glitch or a reset. The undo last button will undo a prior action in case a mistake was changed. The interval timer will run between periods and can be started, stopped, or reset here. Remember that the interval lengths were assigned in match setup. At the bottom of the screen are the rosters. If you entered a roster for the team, the cap numbers will show up here. Remember that you assigned a division and a gender to the match, so only the athletes with that division and gender will show up in the team roster. To see the athlete that is associated with the cap number, right-click on it. This will display the athlete's name if it is in the roster and their statistics for the match. To assign a goalie for the team, click in the goalie box, and then select the cap number of the goalie. Notice that the roster turned yellow, which is a reminder that you must select an athlete to assign the action. This will remind you that you need to select a cap number from the roster for certain actions. If you want to change a cap number for an athlete, click Change Cap, then select the athlete out of the roster, and then you can type in the new cap number. Now let's begin the match. We begin by starting the game clock, either here or by pressing the game clock push button. The white team won the sprint, so we'll click the white sprint button. Again, notice that the roster turned yellow to remind you to select the cap number of the athlete that will be credited with the sprint. To reset the shot clock, click the reset button. Or if you are using push buttons, pushing the shot clock button will also reset it. White scored the first goal, so click G for the white team. And then select the cap number from the roster. Now click the start button to restart the game clock and shot clock, which was automatically reset. As time on the shot clock runs down, the counter will turn yellow. And as it runs out, the counter will turn red and a four second horn will sound. Reset the shot clock by clicking on the reset button or pushing the shot clock button and then click start to restart the game clock. The blue team asks for a timeout, so we'll click the TO button for the blue team and the interval timer. We'll begin counting down for the timeout. A warning horn will sound, and another horn will sound at the end of the timeout. To restart the game, click the Start button. The blue team is assessed a penalty, so click the blue P button, and then click the cap number in the roster. Click Start to restart the game. Next, an exclusion penalty is assessed on the white team, so click the E and the cap number. You will now see the exclusion clock, which will begin counting down once you start the game clock again. If you need to clear the exclusion or change the time before the exclusion clock runs out, you can click on it in the box to remove it or make a change to the time that is left. Once you come to the end of the period, the interval timer will begin counting down the time between periods. At the end of the interval, the period number will increase, the clocks will reset, 
and you can begin the next period by clicking Start on the game clock. That's the basics for running a match. Now, let's take a look at the match log. To look at or change the match log during a stop in play or at the end of a match, click on the Edit Log button. This will take you to the log for the quarter that you are currently in. To view a different quarter, click on the quarter radio button to the left. To view the whole game, click on the All button. The match log shows you the quarter, team, cap number, action, and time at which the action occurred in the quarter. You can change any of the information by clicking on the box and using the spinner, or selecting the item from the drop-down list. To change the time, click and highlight the current time, then type in the time with no punctuation. Note that if you change the time, the action may move as the log is sorted by time. You can add an action by clicking on the Add button. Select the team, cap number, action, and type in the time. You can delete an action by selecting it and clicking on the delete button. To print the log, click the print button. This will open a preview window. To print the report, click the printer icon here. Or to close the preview without printing, click on the door. Now let's take a look at the final report. To run the final report for a match, select reports from the main menu. Select the match that you want to run the report for, the number of copies to run, and whether you want to preview the report before it prints. You can also select the format to print the report to, printer, HTML, which can be uploaded to the web, or PDF, that can be uploaded to the web or emailed. Once you have selected your options, click Print. The match report has the match information at the top, roster and player stats, match progress, score by quarter, and a place for the official to sign. To print the report from the preview window, click the printer icon. If this report does not preview correctly, you may need to install the fonts that came with Poloware 3. Refer to the installation sheet that came with your Poloware 3 disk or our help files for information on how to install those fonts. All that's left now is to back up your data. Backing up is probably the single most important thing that you can do in Poloware. If you back up frequently, you will never need to restore from a backup. Inevitably though, if you do not back up, you are going to encounter some catastrophic failure that makes you a shoe had, such as the nature of technology. Before you do the backup, make sure that you have a safe place to keep it, either on a CD, DVD, USB thumb drive, or other removable media. You can also back up to a network drive if you have one available. Please do not back up your system to your hard drive. If your hard drive crashes, you will lose both your data and your backup. To back up your data, select Match, Backup, and Backup System Data. Click the Browse button and navigate to the place that you want to keep your backup. I keep mine on a network drive that gets backed up every night. Next, click the Zip button. Click Yes and the backup process will begin. When it is finished, backup will tell you where it put the backup file. All backups are named backup underscore poloware 3zip If you want to save more than one backup, you can use Windows Explorer to rename the backup that you want to save. If you need to restore the backup, you will have to change the name back to backup underscore poloware 3zip Speaking of restoring the backup, if for some reason you do need to do a restore, go to the main menu, select Match, 
backup, and restore system data. Click Browse and navigate to the backup file. Remember that it is backup underscore poloware3.zip. Click Restore, Yes, and the data will be restored to the system. Those are the basics for setting up a system for the first time and running your first match. Practice is a good thing, so set up and run a practice match of your own and run through a couple of situations that you might run into in a match. If you have any questions, you can check out our extensive help files located here or contact our support staff. Thanks for purchasing IST's Poloware and have a great match.